So again, you're all very welcome to our Holy Mass this morning. Uh, I remember when I was in seminary in Rome, uh, I went along to Mass in St. Peter's. Now St. Peter's, uh, to this day, it's, it's full of uh, pilgrims and, and tourists, a bit of both. Some, some people go for the religious aspect to see where the, the church was founded and the, 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 the burial place of St. Peter and all the various uh, popes that are buried there and the work of, of Michelangelo and the Pietà and, and various things like that. Uh, so there's, there are artists there, people with an artistic flair, historical flair, religious flair, and there are people then just, just as tourists. It's an old city that they like looking at old things, old buildings. So uh, I was attending mass there as a seminarian, and I was sitting down the back because I'm an Irish Catholic, and um, and I could see then it's, it came for, for communion time. So being somewhat ordered, I thought I'd let, let off the front rows, you know, the rows in front of me go up first, and then I'd go up. Uh, last or go up to towards the end and I could see how this uh, line formed in the middle and people were going up to the priest but then there were some people there who obviously didn't know exactly what they were doing right so they were in the queue but they were like with their hands and like, they were kind of leaning forward to see what's, what's everyone else doing where is everyone else going and they're kind of wandering forward and kind of with their hands then trying to kind of work out how this thing works uh huh and then they got to the, to the front and they were kind of, you know, two hands head open and head back and tongue out and hands up. They obviously, they weren't Catholic, right, is the point. They weren't Catholic. They got to the front and they, they just went along to this religious ceremony and did what everyone else was doing. So then they got Holy Communion, they received Holy Communion in their hand and then they walked away. Right, just walked away with it. Now, I at this point was like, do I have to intervene? Who's going to intervene? Hopefully there's a bouncer up there or something. Uh, so some good God-fearing soul up there, just, um, uh, just stopped them and said, you know, obviously the, the, the language difficulties, you wouldn't know what language uh, would be spoken there, so he, he said, you have to eat it, right? You have to consume it, okay? It's not, it's not a souvenir. Uh, but it just, it just struck me how, how, uh, how routine it can become for us to receive Holy Communion, and how as such easy it can become for us to, to not really appreciate the Eucharist. You know, in, in that moment, like, I guess I, I almost felt a kind of a need to, to defend the Lord. Not that, that this person was doing anything. They didn't know, they didn't understand what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. They weren't, you know, deliberately out there to steal a host and bring it home. But at the same time, because it's such a treasure to us, we don't just give it out to people who don't believe what it is. You know, if you want to receive Holy Communion, you, you can, just as a process beforehand, you know, baptism and formation in the, in the sacraments, and then by all means. But it's not just something we, we, just, we just give out to anyone who wants, because they want it. If, if, if you want it, well, do you believe in it? Do you believe it's the Eucharist? I remember celebrating a, a school mass here, not in, not in this parish, um, but after the Mass then, I was just talking to the sacristan, we were just talking about different things, and I spotted a little white host on the ground, you know, which had been, it had been stepped on. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know. I walked over and tried to pick off the grit and, well, consume it, because, because it's Jesus. Because it's Jesus. It's just the easiest way of saying it. The body and blood of Jesus. Jesus himself says that this is my body. Take and eat. This is my blood. Take and eat. When I did a mission in a parish that shall remain nameless, it's not in this country, so it doesn't matter, uh, but I met this uh, a wonderful, a wonderful lady. She was such a dedicated wife, such a, a dedicated mom, and because she was in a country where food is very, very important and everyone has a very sensitive palate. Um, she would cook maybe four different dinners for all of the different members of the family, some who kind of like the pasta al dente, some who like it a little squishier, some who like it practically raw. And so all the students that this pasta has to stay in for 35 seconds, that, that, that's then you leave in a little more then for the 40 seconds for the guy whose name I can't say or you know what country it is. <laughs> Oh, and so the pat has to be cooked four different ways, you know what I mean? Because they all, they, all, they all have their own like slightly little, little different tastes. And then the husband would come back, and he'd say, "Oh, pasta is it? <sighs> so what can I do?" And we'd be sitting around at the table, and we'd be talking about the meal because 
in that culture, you talk about food like we talk about weather. Uh, so, and they, and they say, hey, look, she tries, but she's not a good cook. She was within earshot, <laughs> as in, she was three yards that way. <laughs> okay, she tries, but she's, nah, nah, she's not a, not a good cook. And I just thought, my goodness, I want to smack you. Um, but of course, I'm a priest, so I said, indeed. <laughs> so, I just thought, she is serving, virtuous, prayerful. She's such a model wife and mom and and you don't see it and you don't see it you have no idea of the treasure that you have in your house here because i know lots of families and she's a keeper she's a treasure that one i was reading in uh, fulton sheen's book and he describes how it can happen that jewelers who spend their days cutting and refining and cleaning and polishing priceless diamonds can just start to get bored of it after five years, six years. Oh, here's another 24 carat diamond, whatever. Zzz, you know, and just polish it away. There we go. There's another one. There we go. Clean that one up. You spend your day holding precious jewels, and after a while, so what? It's just another one. I have another one here. And this can happen with the Eucharist. You know that, that expression, familiarity breeds contempt. We can just get used to it. And so like, the Lord has this, has this delicate balance to maintain. If he makes the Eucharist too hard to get, um, is he like playing Simon Says is, is he making life complicated that we have to do a certain number of things that we can only receive Holy Communion, for example, in Dublin? Say there was one church per country. And you'd have, you can only receive communion there. Well, then, you know, going to receiving Holy Communion would be a day-long event. Two hours there, mass for an hour, a little less maybe, two hours home, you know, back in the day when there weren't cars, you know, if he makes things hard, then, what, Lord, why are you making Holy Communion so difficult? But then if you make it easy, like it is today for us, if you make it easy, then it's, well, is it cheap then? Is it only Holy Communion? Is it only mass? So it's, it's a difficult balance for the Lord. He wants to be accessible he wants us to, to be able to get to him. And at the same time, it, this cannot ever become ordinary. So, like in, 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 the, the, in the days of the Israelites in, in, in the tabernacle, the Lord was with them. So the tabernacle traveled with them wherever they were, the tabernacle was. But at the same time, not any just random punter could go in to the Holy of Holies. This was reserved for the high priest. So... I'm, I'm with you, but there's still a sacredness about this. So I'm, I'm there with you. I'm, wherever you are planted, I'm there with you. Even if it's a tent, I'm there with you. But this isn't ordinary. God's presence in, 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 in Holy Communion is anything but ordinary. It's an extraordinary miracle every single time. And for us priests, we can simply never get used to it. Husbands should never get used to their amazing wives because you're all amazing, aren't you? Yes, Yerla. All right? Uh, husbands should never get used to that. Uh, jewelers should never get used to these beautiful gems that they have the privilege of working with. But we as Catholics, we can never just get used to the Eucharist. It's, it's our greatest treasure. I mean, if, if the Lord says, this is my body, my goodness, what more do you want? How, how, how much more clearly does he have to say it? Like, it's just those three words for, this is my body. The, all right? How, that's it, it's there. Like you can, we can have very long theological reflections and we can throw out a load of uh, St. Thomas's Summa Theologica on this, but ultimately, the Holy Communion is Jesus. And that's exactly what he wants for us. He wants to, us to enter into a holy communion with him, and enter into a holy a union, a friendship, uh, uh, like the unity between a husband and a wife, the union between deep friends, the union between uh, us and God. This is what he wants to establish, a holy communion. So it's not just a name, like the Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the Bread of the Angels. They're not just mere titles. Like they, they indicate a reality. So like even, you, know, you hear the expression so often, like you know, I'm getting my first Holy Communion, or, or I've got my first Holy Communion. Do you remember your first Holy Communion? Have you spent your Holy Communion money yet? You know, all that kind of thing. Uh, holy communion 
this, this is what it's supposed to establish. That when I receive the Lord, I enter into a holy communion with him. That's why the moments then after Holy Communion are so important in order to, to, to be aware of this Holy Communion. And it can be difficult for kids, sorry, it can be difficult for parents with kids, it can be difficult for kids too, because uh, the, the Mass gets a little quieter at that point, people are moving around and there's maybe a bit of music playing. And, but for us, for us adults or for those of us who have received Holy Communion, it's so important in those moments that it's just, just, even it's just a second of recollection so that I recognize what I've just done and in fact what I am called to. I'm called to enter into a holy communion. This is, this is anything but ordinary. This is an extraordinary gift, an extraordinary privilege. And so we ask the Lord today on this feast of Corpus Christi to renew our Eucharistic love that when we receive Holy Communion, that it may be exactly that for us, a moment of Holy Communion with you. Amen.